us here live on the BBC today and throughout this championship. Our live match for you is Ding Junhui, Zhao Gudong. If you want yeah, Stuart Bingham, sense. Jack Lizowski, that's yeah, available on the red button and online. But let's say good morning to John Virgo and Alan Whitmanis. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, everybody. Zhao Gudong breaks off. First frame of this second and final session. And probably a little bit to think about overnight. He won the first two frames of this match and would have been very disappointed to go three frames behind at the end of that first session. I think maybe Ding Junhui has brought the back of him now, Alan? Yeah, it's a good point you make, John, because he started very strong, Zhao Gadong. 80-odd the first frame, 50-odd to go 2-0 in front. But the heavy scoring dried up. And what a, what a starter for Ding Junhui, right out the blocks. How still he stayed in that shot. Pretty good, 69% long pot success. I always think if you're round about the mid 60s, and the reason I say that, because a lot of the long pots are played as a shot for nothing. Every other aspect of the game, I'm looking for 90% or above, and I'm certain the players are. He's just got a little bit of work to do here with the cue ball. Got this red to the right centre, but got to control the cue ball, got to find the gap to get back on the black. And have played it better. Well, our optimistic director already telling you two reds. This is the second black. Mm, but whether he can get back on the black now or not is another matter. 16. in this, he's running through, just don't take your eyes off the pot, trust the look with position well he, f he found a nice path to get through now he won't be playing the black and the reason he won't is because that red just below the black near the top cushion that will interfere with his position pink's the better option Yes, already, John, that's two tricky little reds he's knocked in. He doesn't normally have to play that many of those. His cue ball is so tight. 23. Keeps it under close order. He really looks in good good touch. Just early on here. The hallmark of his game is Ding Junhui's positional play. It's up there, well, at least as good as anyone else in the game. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And he's got some lovely touches around the pink and black, hasn't he? You know, that red he played before he played the pink. You know, he judged it perfect, the kiss off the second red. But not for the first time in our commentary career, we give him the dreaded commentator's curse. Pink ball. Just one small piece of information for our viewers is that the, um, the cushions have been recovered overnight, so that's good news for the players. Just after three days, I think that's a good thing. Back in the day, 10, 15, 20 years ago, the, I think the table was only covered once up until the semi-finals, or recovered once. Pushed the cue ball to this top cushion, felt that the red along the top cushion thing would re refuse, and he's correct. But as always, when you're in this situation, Xiao Gudong, well, he could do with the start he had at the 
beginning of this match. These first couple of frames, very, very important. You feel if things young we was to get the better of him in the early exchanges, then there'd be no way back. Things young we won't be frightened of the winning line when it starts looming. Not played that well, he's left being a couple of tenters here to the left middle. Yeah, the one on the pink spot line, I just wonder if he could play it, screwing it back. There's a shot to nothing, in fact he's playing the low one, and that is also a shot to nothing. Big shot this. Oh, that's straight in the heart of the pocket, what a shot. What? Yeah, he played a, a similar sort of shot uh, in the first session and he came out of two cushions. And we know how tight these middle pockets have been playing, but if you hit them right in the middle, nothing's going to stop them going in. So just the start that Ding was looking for here. Eight. Thirteen. Fourteen. Just okay. It's all about missing the red near the top cushion. Just overdone that slightly. The red in the middle of that. Cluster of five, obviously goes to the right corner. Just 23 <coughs> points away now from getting to the snooker's required stage. I can play that well. 22. It's hard to see him making a mistake now. Gonna miss the green on the way back. He played it absolutely inch perfect. Twenty-seven. Yeah, you have to say, John, you, you always marvel, don't you? His cue ball control is twenty-eight. Oh, it's exemplary. It's a such good touch with it, as you said as well. But when you're playing against him, you just think, when's this guy gonna run out of position? He just always seems to land it. Correct side of the next shot. 33. Even dropping this through for the black to the opposite corner. It's so precise. 34. Yeah, again. Just makes it so much easier, doesn't it? After this black, just looking for one more red to get to the snooker's required stage. 41. Forty-two. Yeah, and I was only saying yesterday that it seemed at times that he didn't like playing at the Crucible, but certainly his record over the last few seasons. I thought his semi-final match last year against uh, Mark Selby, which he just lost out on, was one of the classic semi-finals. Forty-seven. And prior to that year, before he lost in the final. Well, the red's not gone in, but I don't think there's any way Charles Dudonk. Well, he may come back to the table only because it's the first frame of the morning. 
No thoughts of winning it. 71 points behind. With just 59 remaining. But a little bit of table time won't go amiss for the battle ahead. But yeah, the point you make is spot on, John. As Ding Jun Wee now he's a time served almost. I don't know if you'd call him a veteran, but he's been at the Crucible now for so many years. Totally comfortable out there. As you say, last couple of years losing only to the champion, the eventual champion, Mark Selby. Nice. Seen a little interview actually pre tournament from Ding. And he made a statement in it that I thought was quite interesting. He said, he said, I believe I'm the favourite going to the Crucible this year. I think two or three years ago, it's not something he would have said, but he obviously fancies the job. Well, you can't be a little bit of confidence. And he's also... Uh, got a good following now. He re reacts with the audience and they enjoy him and he gets a tremendous reception when he comes in and as Rob Walker introduced him as the Yorkshire Dragon. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the snooker public in particular has really uh, got a soft spot for him. <coughs> well, there's a double that wasn't what? really wanted. As I say, but I don't really think he's got any thoughts of winning this frame, just wants a bit of table time. He's certainly no thought of winning it now. So blue box. let's practice a long blue. Yeah, we're down one. Frame and he's turned to referee frame. Brendan Moore. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't turn to Dinkin and Wee, but he's conceded to the referee. I'm in for fun. Excellent player is Robert, and uh, as I say, he starts his campaign this evening. Thank you, frame 11. Dinkin and Wee to break. It's only the break off, but that is if you could bottle that break off, you could sell it for a few quid. Red pushed down below the black, no return to bulk. Doesn't want to slip off the edge of the pack here because there's a red at the back of them that might go, but he's judged that well. Good shot, Joe Godon. <laughs> has to find a way back into this match and it's just you just feel it beginning to slip away I know it's only 7-3 a very good player he's been around up quite a while now he actually he's been to one ranking final which was the 2013 Shanghai Masters and he lost to Ding in that final he's not really kicked on the highest ever ranking of 19 he's currently ranked 25 Just run Fuck, past yes. it, Miss Cole, but it won't be taken. Because this is a chance for Ding to drop this red in and be nicely on the black. Well, I don't know the way he's looking. Well, maybe he can't hold for the black, but as I say, he won't take the miss. He'll take the pot on. It might just play a touch easier with the, the new cushions on as well. Oh, wouldn't have mattered. Right in the heart of the pocket. One. Four. 
Five. Always uh, nice to see how thing goes uh, about making a frame-winning contribution. And he's got an opportunity here. He's got a few loose reds to play for, but Twice. you know the first opportunity you get, he'll try and bring other reds into play. It's funny how people have different styles. I've never been a great lover of his bridge hand. It looks like the cue could come off at any time, but obviously, 90. you know, proof is in the pudding. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've always thought it a bit quizzical, sort of, as well. It, it, it doesn't look the most solid, but, you know, but, I guess it's a bit like fingerprints, I suppose, that everyone's a little different. He cues so smoothly, though, that look at this shot. Doesn't over hit it. Just seems to just float the ball in this time. It's just gone wrong, I feel. I mean, just didn't get 27. the cannon on the red as he would like. He wanted to hit it half ball, hit it. Well, he hit the join of two reds. So that's uh, end of visit. Things you we 27. Didn't make the most of that opportunity. But as I always say, if you pot the ball, if you run out of position, you always get to play the next shot. It's when you miss, when you're in, that that can be costly. Nice safety shot, that, though, from Zhao. Match time, just over the three hour mark, but it's been entertaining stuff, it's been very good. And as I say, the, the, there was one frame, uh, I was doing the match yesterday, and uh, the third frame when Xiao had a good lead and then he missed when he was in, and Ding Jun Wei stole the frame with a 68 break, and it just turned the match on its head. Playing this in the middle, is it going to drop down? It's staying high. They don't go in, and the thing is, he thought he could play it a shot for nothing, but look where the cue ball's finished. That's a mistake to leave Ding with an easy starter. Yeah, there's almost a feeling there that he's at 7 3 down, he's thinking, I'm going to have to make something happen rather than wait for something that's a little more certain. Thank you, Smith. Hint of impatience there with that shot. One. But it is tough out there. He's playing one of the, the very best. He'd have rather have potted the pink clean, but I think that red's still available in the left middle. And this is a second good chance. Eight. I always think with Ding Jun he's somewhat of a throwback of a player. He, he doesn't overhit shots. He's not the sort of guy that goes in and just pulverises opponents. It's just pure weight of scoring. And with that tight cue ball, he doesn't have to hit the ball hard. 14. He plays a very straightforward game, but he, he's only allowed to do that because of the talent 15. he has.
Yes, came into this championship, seeded world number three. And what a bottom half of the draw we've got, because the way it always works, number one seed, then number four seed 21. will be in his half. Number two seed, which is Ronnie O'Sullivan, will have the number three seed in his half. Uh, there's been a few 22. upsets in the top half, but in the bottom half, you've got Ding, of course, you've got Ronnie, who got through, you've got Judd Trump, who starts his uh, campaign in the next day or so. Meanwhile, 27. Ding got nice control of the cue ball, just looking for about well, three more of these reds, and that'll get into snooker as required. So when people look at the draw and say, oh, well, this one and that one, you never know what's going to happen, do you? No, you sure don't. Not here, anyway. Yeah, I think probably in the days of Davis, Henry winning throughout the 80s and 90s, they would look at, you know, who do I play in the last 16, who am I likely to play in the quarterfinals? Not, not anymore. And that applies to every player in the draw. They're only interested in the guy they're playing. Look at the cue ball again. Absolutely played it to the inch. 34. Yeah, just this red and a colour, and it was snookers required. 35. Again, the control here. I know it's an easy little shot, but it, it's only as easy as you make it. And he makes the game when he's in good touch, he makes it look ridiculously easy. 40. This boy. 41. Yeah, we've always said that the best breaks are the ones where the audience is sitting there thinking, 47. oh, I could have bought that. Exactly. Nothing really happening. I'm just sort of flicking a few balls in here and there. <laughs> and the frame is long gone. We're only just over 20 minutes of actual playing time. 54. And it's already 8 3. Exhibition shot, cue ball in between brown and yellow. Uh, I just caught the brown. And that's 61. what I mean, he, he, he will share a joke with the audience now, which he never used to do a few years ago. Yeah, this time he's going to stays in his chair. Bing Jun Hee has dominated the first two frames this morning and he opens up the lead to 8-3. Right, sort of a foot this side of the bolt line. Yeah, just to get coverage with the green. Because it slides off the third cushion. Yeah, watch the second red, the, the, the one that slips past the black, that's the key to it. It stops the return. It's difficult, to, it's amazing how difficult that is to get the red down there. But, uh, I mean, Joe handled it well, you've got to say, but it was a brilliant break-off. Yeah, and as you see, well this side of the bolt line, which gives it an opportunity to, if nothing else, get the green as a cover. Yes, I, that's a good point, actually, John. You get the, the cue ball about a foot south of the bolt line. It means that if you get the cue ball more central in the bolt cushion, it takes away quite a number of options for the return. Yeah, of course, the key's always been that you get a good cue ball as close to the bolt cushion, then nothing's easy, but uh, we saw a classic 12. break yeah, off there. Down to break. Well, there's two more frames to be played before a, a mid-session interval. If Xiao doesn't win one of those two frames, he, he's in for an early bath here. Yeah, 
<laughs> quite interesting. It's almost a carbon copy of Ding's break off. <laughs> It's interesting. I'm obviously hoping to leave this red straight along the cushion, which he just about has. Almost playing a little game there with Zhao Gadong, saying, I'm going to leave you this. If I leave it straight, you can't play it. If I leave it, well, not a nice angle, then all the best, have a go. I don't even think that's worth taking on. Do well to get the cue ball out anywhere on the black. Yeah, very risky. But he played a shot in the last frame and he's played that one. You just feel he's getting a little bit desperate. Once again, Ding is there and ready to pick up the pieces. He's off again here. Pot success, 93%. That's good. 83%. Well, I think that reflects in the scoreline. Six. That's not going to win matches at this level. Seven. Just play for the loose red here. It's too risky to be playing to a cannon into the cluster with a lot of right hand side. It made the black missable. But he'd be looking for a good angle this time because there's no loose reds available. Well, maybe there's one red Forty. just sticking out that could go to the right middle, but I'm certain he'd be looking for a good angle on the black here. Well, he's not got it. Fifty. He's not got it. So I don't. Whether that, he's just looking now whether that end red does go to the right middle. If it does, then that's the one he'll play on because he's not got a good angle on the black to bring anything else into play. But he's had a look at the red near the ball cushion, which tells me maybe that red doesn't go to the right middle. Well, how did he make that angle? That was amazing. Made it just purely and simply with pace to widen it. Yeah, but you were right, John. It was borderline, wasn't 22. it? 22. What a piece of cune. Again. That was as good a split 23. as you will see from the angle he had on the black. Yeah, the very fact that he caught the, the left side of the pack as we look was impressive as well. Because I think going if he'd gone into the, the, the central area or right-hand side of them, he wouldn't have got much, much of a split. That was awesome. He's masterful as Ding at picking reds off the edge of clusters. He's almost machine-like the way he goes about these situations. He's got two reds in his own mind. He's got two opportunities to develop the the, the bunch. They're clever again. 29. Little angle on the pink just to bring a few into play. If he doesn't fancy that, he can play the loose red again. He's got one more chance, but let's see if he can promote a couple here. Huh. You bet he can. And once again, proving that if you're accurate, there's no pocket too tight. Right in the heart of the pocket. 35. Well, as you mentioned earlier, he did an interview, said he was favourite for the title. And uh, what he's showing here so far this morning, he's in real good stroke. And for 36. once, we give him a compliment. It didn't, it didn't spoil the next shot. Forty-six. 
43. Yeah, not far away from the winning line again. Another 25 points. Get to soon as required. 44. Mm, he didn't really get into that as he would like, though. He's on the black, but he's not guaranteed to get good position here. Just didn't pot the red in the middle of the pocket. That's what took the pace out of the cue ball. Oh, that little nudge. Well, the smile tells you. 51. He's on nothing easy, if anything at all. Yeah, it looked as though it was going to be a good shot, and then all of a sudden this red came along and just nudged it enough, I think. It brought a smile from, from Ding, but... 51 points the lead, still 91 remaining. Plenty of snooker left in this frame. Well, looking at this red to the middle, this is tough. Uh, this a cute angle with any pace. That's what's the problem. It's Things only the pace that 51. kept it out. And just looking at that again, I mean, it looked absolutely bang in the middle of the pocket, didn't it? Yeah, the pace kept it out. These these pockets are so sharp from that um, from that line, so acute. Now, Zhao Gadong, I think he, uh, speculative double. I think he's just settling for a decent safety shot. <coughs> but uh, that's not the best. I don't know if Ding might be tempted at it. The only way he'll play this red is if it's the only one he can leave. If he can get the cue ball anywhere near the jaws of the middle pocket, he'll take it on. See, it's pretty. It's poker straight, this, so it's worth playing. Oh, nailed. Absolutely nailed. Yeah, and we're right behind the line of the shot. No movement. Make sure you push the cue through straight and fully commit. Okay, you might say, well, the only red he could leave was the one he was playing, but he knew that, that if he knocks it in, it gives him this frame winning opportunity. And he's certainly been very impressive so far this morning, as you can see. 97% pot success so far this morning. And he hit that really well, considering he was so close to cushion Six. to get that amount of pace. And the fact that he's nudged this red and knocked it on, he can't be grudging that. That was not easy. Red and the black will do, and we'll put him 68 points ahead with just 67 remaining. Seventeen. Eighteen. So no way back now. So Joe Goodall wins. It all started so brightly. He won the first two frames, was queuing nicely. Lost the third one that he should have won. Twenty-five. And it's gone all downhill from that moment on. 
26. And Ding now just one frame away from a place in the second round. And on all the seas, Alan, and we say this, it gets a bit edgy first round 33. jitters because best of 19, although it is a lot, they can't wait to get to these three 30. session best of 25s, can they? Yeah, best of 25s, what I call a, a proper snooker match, isn't it? Three sessions, eight, eight, and nine. You just feel like you've got a wee bit more leeway to find you settle your 31. way into the match. But Ding has shown great character in this match, as we say, 2 0 down. Should have been probably 3 0 down. But since then, he's just been the boss, he's dominated. And it's been a good little run out. And that's something hard to say because it's not 47. impossible that Zhao Gadong could come back, but the touch that Ding's in, it's just doesn't look on the cards. No, I'm 48. afraid at the moment you can say that Zhao Gudong is just playing for a bit of pride. And if he can win the next frame, Zhao, he will take us to the mid-session interval and with the match still going. But it could 51. be highly likely that the next frame could be the last. Good player. 53. But of course, playing Ding Junhui, he's, he's the main man in China. You know, it's, it's a tough draw. 56. Well, he's been up and down the table a bit for this break, but it doesn't matter. 60. Two yellows, two greens, one brown, two blues, four blacks. 65. First pink. 71. Well, when he's playing like this, he is an absolute frame. delight to watch. Yeah, he Thank you, frame 13. Things you need to break. 
Now, is Ding Junhui taking this on? Looks like. Oh, look at that. Come on. He's buzzing this morning. Yeah, just almost breezed it in. I said earlier, he doesn't overpower players, it's just pure precision. Ding. Precise little positional shot for the red. Oh, he's lost the cue ball this time. And being the perfectionist he is, he's not happy with it. Eight. Yeah, and what I'm knowing more is after that tremendous opening red, <laughs> that he's not going to get as much. Well, you play this red to the middle, I suppose you can do when you're 9-3 in front, but this is tough. Yeah, I think he just went... For a little Eight. bit of frustration there. So, Xiao, can you take us past the mid session interval? This is probably the first decent chance he's had early on in the frame this morning. Good luck to you. of power the, the side cushion into the reds oh good effort well done good shot he's on a couple of reds six yeah, deserve to be on one finding that gap and they and make no mistake he's a talented lad this Xiao Gadong I remember a match he played this season over in Berlin, the German Masters. He, he took care of Mark Selby. He outscored him, outplayed him. A brilliant player he is. He's just been kept in his chair. Seven. Good shot. Particularly as he had to play it with a lot of pace. To get the cue ball up for the blue. Now he needs one good positional shot here to make this a a good chance to make a big contribution. Mr. Green running down, playing for that red just below the pink. Well played. Good shot. Twelve. Thirty. Just not far enough, but he's still got the alternative of playing the pink. And there is a red that won't take much control of the cue ball to get on for the opposite corner. What you got to do in these situations is just blank the score line out of your mind. Easier said than done. Xiao Gudong, 13. Yeah, and Ding was out his chair there like a greyhound out the traps. He wants to get this match over with. One. Before the mid-session interval. Things you and we, <laughs> one. Well, I suppose it happens to every player. They just sort of think they're over the line, lose the concentration, and that won't help. Painkillers, please. Table one. Yeah, there's only one winner in that contest. <laughs> yeah. We've, I've seen a few players wrap the knuckles, but not many do it with the head. But he's just annoyed at himself. Happens in Glasgow all the time, John. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> 
In a way, that was quite a clever shot. If he'd have found the ball cushion, he'd have left an easy safety shot for Ding to send the red up the table. But the fact he's left it almost level with the red, it's not easy to play safe now off the red in the ball can. Did I detect a red mark on his forehead there? I think I did. Yeah, there. Yeah, he actually did the, the very same thing earlier in the season. Not going to be doing that too often. No, it just shows you though, he looks so calm, cool and serene. And this is a blue and then all of a sudden banging his head on the table. Well, it's not stopped in pocket. One. But I don't want it to become a trend. <laughs> well, Ramble. pick the bones out of that, boys and girls. What a pot. <sighs> That's actually a clever. That's a clever shot playing for this red where the pink is. One last. Five. him to have any difficulty with this red with nothing to do with the cue ball to, again the new cushions on this morning just to help this red slip in should he catch any of the jaw Seen it, didn't you? Thank you? Caught the near jaw on the way in, but maybe wouldn't have gone in last Six. evening. In fact, it definitely wouldn't have gone. So, one good positional shot, just down, just below and left of the blue. Has he made it? He's on a couple, but none of them are easy. Twelve. Yeah, you just get the feeling he's just lost his concentration slightly. He knows the match, or he thinks the match is in the bag. I'll never take anything for granted. Mm, that red struggled in, but that could be the key one now. Got the frame and match at his mercy. Twenty. Yeah, you see, break reach has to reach sixty-two. So Twenty-one. Win the frame at this visit. So twenty-four points clear. Three reds. Twenty-eight. Let's see, three reds and a couple of pinks and black. 22, putting 46 in front, 29. so he's going to need one of those three reds that are close to the this black cushion. Thirty-six. Yeah, he's just about okay. Seems to come off that side cushion a little bit quicker than it went on. So pots this black is thirty-nine points in front with fifty-nine remaining. So two reds, two colours. Forty-three.
Yeah, nicely floated in. 44. It looks to be all over by the shouting now. So there you see it. This red will put in 44 47. points ahead with just 43 remaining. But nice angle he's got. Bound to be on the black. Well, it was a match 48. at the start, I've got to be honest with you. Zhao Gudong looked as though he was going to push Ding all the way and in the first two frames. But once Ding got his first frame on the scoreboard, he has been in sparkling 65. form. Fifty-six. And we see it so many times with the seeds that they get those first round jitters. Ronnie O'Sullivan was four nil down, remember, in his first round match. We've already lost the world number one world champion. So it is a potential 63. banana skin for these players. And when you two nil down, you maybe just start to get a little bit worried. Sixty-four. But none of it. Not enough on for a century. You've got to be, well, when you get to the yellow, 71. you have to be on 73 to make the century with 27 points remaining. Thank you. And Zhao Gudong, well, he's done extremely well, as all the qualifiers do, three tough matches. 76. And I'm certain when the draw came out, he'd have preferred to have played anybody but Ding Junwei. Eighty. Why well, sending out a statement is ding to the rest of the field? If someone's going to beat me in this championship, 85. they're going to have to play very well. Semi-finalists last year, finalists the year before, and a splendid finish. Yes. So Ding Jung Wei, a warm handshake from Zhao Gudong. I'm sure wish him all the best in the rest of the tournament. Believe me, Ding Jung Wei and getting a tremendous reception from the Sheffield crowd. The world number.